Hey guys, welcome to a Web Design Tusk Plus quick tip. I'm Adi and today we're talking about Twitter backgrounds. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with them and have made a few uh, so far. But if you haven't or you're simply looking for new ideas, then I think this short tutorial will come in handy. Now, there are a few types of Twitter backgrounds. Um, you have the single image background, uh, the uh, faded image, the repeating image. And let me just show you uh, some of these real quick. Uh, this is um, a single image, basically huge image, uh, some content on the left side, and that's pretty much it. Uh, this one, faded image, uh, tiny image, well, tiny compared to this one, but, uh, you know, smaller image, uh, solid background here, which kind of blends with the rest of the uh, of the page's background. And then finally, repeating background, um, which we can see here. Uh, this one is a very nice pattern, which, uh, you know, when repeating over and over, um, will eventually create something like this. Uh, there are a bunch of resources that will tell you exactly how to design a Twitter background, how to integrate it with your own website, you know, your branding, your visual identity, uh, what exactly to put in them in the Twitter uh, page. And I'm not going to uh, talk about that. Uh, this is uh, just a quick tip. So remember, we're um, we're kind of uh, running out of time pretty fast. So instead, I'm just going to talk about a very important thing, which is the size that you want to optimize your background for. And I'm going to open up my uh, Twitter page here. This uh, that you see here is the background we'll be designing today. Uh, and I've optimized this for four, uh, 440 1440 by 900. And what exactly does that mean? Well, if we take a look at my browser window here, it's set at 1440 by 900. And if you measure the Twitter content, it's about 920 pixels. That means um, if you subtract this from the total width of your browser, and divide that by two, you get this bit right here, which is exactly what you have uh, to show additional information and to make your page more interesting. So in my case, on this resolution, um, uh, the width is 245, maybe 250, and 250 on, on this side. Uh, but Watch what happens if I resize my window to a smaller resolution, like uh, to a smaller width, like 1280. Um, the the space that we have here on the left and right gets smaller, so we can't really fit that much information in there. Uh, again, resize it to two, uh, 1024, and the space gets even smaller. So let me just go back to 1440 and I'm just going to show you real quick browser display statistics by W3 schools. According to this, 1024 by 768 is a resolution used by 14% of the users. Uh, more than that, you have resolutions uh, like 1280 by 1024 by 800, 1440 by 900, which is what we'll be using today. So uh, keep this in mind when, when designing a Twitter background, probably the best bet, the safest bet for you is to go with something like this, like the first two, 1280 by, uh, by something. And 1280 actually gives you a fair amount of space here to um, to make use of. So use this if you want or um, if you're confident that your uh, your audience, 
your followers have large displays you can go for a higher resolution uh, but uh, for now today uh, we'll be using 1440 by 900 and we'll be designing the background based on that so let's jump to Photoshop and start doing some work okay guys here we are in Photoshop I've created a new document 1440 by 900 uh, drew a couple of guides and this one is 920 so exactly the width of our Twitter content and we need to design around this now this bit on the top right here is 19 20 pixels in uh, in size and I did that to um, to create a gap for this bit right here to know exactly where the Twitter content starts as you can see this one is 19 pixels as well so uh, let me just close this um, let's start with a new layer call it BG and we're gonna create a color overlay 6E 9D9F we're gonna use this very nice green here um, and convert this to a smart object go to filter add noise about 2% noise and click on OK next stop create a new layer call it light uh, bring up the gradient overlay and we're gonna drag from the top left to the bottom right corner from white to black uh, set the blend mode to screen and the opacity to about 50% alright now if you looked in the resource section of the tutorial you saw a link to a brush set uh, you need to download that it contains some grunge brushes that we're gonna use so I'm just gonna choose a very non-destructive way to use brushes in Photoshop which is masking so click on mask on the BG layer and then bring out your brushes and from the set that I've just installed I'm just gonna choose this one uh, it's sample 13 and bring down the opacity to about 10 percent and then just maybe make it a bit smaller click on it and as you can see maybe increase the opacity a bit uh, it adds subtle uh, details something like this okay looking pretty good uh, next stop let's have a look at our finished product here just to know what we're doing and where we're heading so we need the logo we need a separator um, we have a description these two icons and a strip for our website so let's create this top bit with the uh, with the jagged edge here uh, get the rectangle tool drag a rectangle that's about 300 pixels in height something like this doesn't have to be perfect um, you can fill this with white bring the opacity down to about 50 percent next let's deal with this jagged edge and this is very easy to do actually with uh, with a pattern so uh, create a new layer 11 by uh, a new document sorry 11 by 6 transparent zoom in until you can see the pixels here and make a selection like this okay fill this with white go to edit the fine pattern give it a name I've already done this so I'm not gonna do it again and also um, 
select this, flip it, and define a pattern again uh, for and this will will create a different pattern. We're going to use this for this bit right here, uh, the the jagged edge that that's pointing um, upwards. So, as I said, I've already done that. So I'm just going to make a quick selection that's six pixels in height. All right, seven pixels new layer, call it jagged. You can fill it with white for instance or any kind of color that you want. Pattern overlay and I'm just gonna click on my already made patterns. Bring the fill down to zero so we can see the pattern. Go to pattern overlay, snap to origin and as you can see we have uh, a one pixel uh, line and that's because uh, my selection was too big so I need to make it six pixels go back here snap to origin so now um, everything is normal alright bring the opacity down to 50 percent to match the top background and next we gotta take care of that logo. Now the logo is, if I can find it, I've made a dummy logo. So I'm just gonna grab this and throw it in my document. I'm not gonna bother with a real logo since you guys will probably uh, replace it anyway. So align it like this, um, grab the custom shape tool, select this shape right here, it's one of the uh, default shapes in uh, Photoshop, make a selection like this, for color you must have uh, 314041 kind of a dark green and then we're gonna have a uh, description so let me just get my description from my Twitter page uh, the font we're gonna use is Georgia italic 12 pixels the color is 6E99F. All right, let's make it, let's give it a drop shadow, one distance, one size, white for color, normal for blend mode, 75% for opacity. And actually, let's do this a bit smarter. Okay. Copy the layer style and bring this down to about 30 pixels. Line height should be 18 pixels. Good. So we're done with the top part. Next stop, these two icons uh, this bit right here and we're done. So let's uh, bring the icons, these two, all right, web design tits, uh, Georgia bold 14 pixels, something like that, 20 pixel distance, and create a new layer, call it brushes, or brushes if you wish, choose, uh, choose a brush, 
that looks something like this. Yep. And then set the opacity to about 20% and just draw. Move the brushes layer below the uh, text and maybe increase the opacity to about 30%. Just give it another yeah, something like that. I'm just moving kind of quickly now. Um, let's move the Elite again. To something like this. Bring down the text. This will say Elite author wanna be create a new brush layer and do the same oops it's a bit too much something like that below the text all right that looks pretty good all right uh, final step, let's duplicate Jagged and Shape 1. By the way, when making PSDs, uh, don't follow my example and name your layers Shape 1 and Shape 1 Copy, because you're not going to understand any of it when you look uh, three months later. So, change the pattern to the one pointing up and last we have a web address it's going to be italic 12 oops and I'm actually going to copy the text from uh, the uh, the layer effect from that so something like this and something like this and you can play around with it uh, make this a bit smaller I'm, uh, I'm just running out of time here that's why I'm not looking at the details but you know, you got the idea now, so you can play around with it. And yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, the next step, obviously, would be to export the image, import it in Twitter, uh, set it as a background, and there you have it. Okay, guys, hope this was useful. Uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to Web Design Tuts. Any questions, comments, suggestions? leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. This is Adi signing out.